Most of the time when I was working at that Indian restaurant I mentioned in my book, I didn't have any direct contact with customers. But one day I overheard someone complimenting a waiter saying that what they loved about the place was that every dish tasted completely different. At the time I thought that was pretty funny, but later I understood what he was talking about. Most Indian restaurants use a giant shortcut by making a single base curry that they use for every dish. That's not how real Indian food is made. I posted a video making shrimp sog about four years ago on YouTube. It's still up if you want to look it up. And since then, people have asked me if they could just substitute chicken to make it into chicken sog. No, you can't. It doesn't work that way. Not if you want it to taste right. Finally now, here's a recipe that's balanced for chicken. I'll begin by showing you some of the key ingredients. I don't have all of them laid out here, but uh, we've got 30 grams of garlic cloves over here. It's uh, quite a lot, actually. Uh, just a little bit less than that of ginger, about 25 uh, grams. Uh, 120 grams of tomato passata. It's uh, actually Italian pureed tomatoes. You can uh, use a non-Italian brand, but, you know, this works really well. It's the, the best quality you can get in the world. Obviously not traditional for India, but this is the best you can get. Uh, about 420 grams of onions. This seems like a lot of onions, but they're going to cook down, and onions are mostly water. And 100 grams of green chilies. Now, these aren't Serrano. These are some other kind, and I'm not even sure what kind they are myself. They're hot, but they're not blazingly hot, and that's the key. Don't use peppers that are like bell peppers. That, that's not going to work. And don't use, you know, like a whole bunch of little tiny green Thai chilies because otherwise it's going to blow your head off when you're done. It's going to be way too hot. So you want some kind of chili that's hot, but it's not insanely hot. And uh, I've got 100 grams here between these two. Um, and, of course, over here we have 150 grams of spinach that's uh, going to be washed and dried before we begin. I have two chicken breasts, boneless, skinless, that I've weighed out. These have been trimmed up already. It's easy. Okay, now we're going to cut these up into cubes. Get the chicken cubed up. Now, uh, this is the South India spice blend from uh, Volume 3 of the cookbook series. This is really the best thing. This is what you want to use for this. Uh, you, you don't have Volume 3 yet, which <laughs> at this point, as the video is new, I'm sure that you don't. Uh, then you can use that substitute that's mentioned in the annotations at the start. But, but this is really what you want to use for this recipe to make this right. Now that we've got that coated, we're going to add the butter to it. Okay, and now this is going to get put in a, in a tray and put under the broiler. Now here's the chicken ready to go under the broiler. The pan is getting hot. I've got 45 grams of butter, about an ounce and a half, melting in it. You can use ghee if you want. Butter has more flavor, and in this case, it, it, it's going to be just fine. You can use just straight butter for this. It'll, it'll work. When the butter is foamed up, then it can add the onions to it. Here's what the onions look like after about five minutes. Stir them once in a while, but don't stir them constantly. And the heat is on uh, 7, the medium-high, uh, 7 out of 1 to 10. Um, again, because you, you see me stir, stirring them now doesn't mean I'm stirring them constantly. When the camera goes off, I, I stop stirring it. They're going to sit there for a while. It's been about 8 minutes now with the onions cooking. And now I'm going to add uh, bay leaves and a little piece of cinnamon. This is true cinnamon, not cassia like you usually get. And uh, this is just, I've lowered the heat a little bit too. It's gone down to five now uh, instead of seven. And we're going to start cooking the spices into it, the bay and the cinnamon being the first ones. Uh, the timer went off on the chicken, so uh, I'm just setting this off to the side to cool down. There's going to be a bunch of juices that run off of this. We're going to use those later, but right now this is just going to get pushed off to the side to cool down. Somewhere during this time, you need to cut up 
the garlic and the ginger for this. Uh, notice I, I've not cut this into super fine pieces and it's not super coarse either, it's, it's kind of somewhere in between. Now it's been five minutes since I added the bay leaf and the cinnamon to the onions. Now I've got a tablespoon of cumin, black mustard seeds, which is really better in this recipe. If you can get black mustard seeds, use those. Otherwise, uh, of course, you use what you can get. So a tablespoon of cumin, teaspoon of black mustard seeds, and a teaspoon of salt. And we continue cooking this. The heat's still on five, five out of one to ten. Also during this time I've chopped up the green chilies. And you take one and you taste it and you see how hot is it. And these are really a little bit on the mild side. They're, they're not super mild, but, but they're too mild for this dish in my opinion. So I'm going to punch it up a little bit with this Kashmiri merch, which is a, a very hot Indian dried red chili. Well, okay, it's not really hot by Indian standards, but, but it's certainly got some kick to it. So I'm going to end up adding about half a teaspoon of this to it in, uh, in just a little bit, just to bring up that heat level. Now it's been about 12 minutes since I started, uh, since I added the uh, bay leaf and the cinnamon to this. So uh, I'm going to pick that out now. And now we add the garlic and the ginger. The heat's still on five. I'm going to let this cook for a little while. Okay, it's been five more minutes. Now we're ready to add chilies. And the Kashmiri merch I mentioned. Stir this around. And we cook it some more. Soften those chilies, keep developing those flavors. A few more minutes. Okay, it's been yet another five minutes. I'm going to add this tomato passata. And now I'm going to increase the heat. It's been on five all this time. Now I'm going up medium high. It's uh, about seven and a half here. Fry this tomato um, in with the, the vegetables at a higher temperature now. Oh, well, this is going on. We drain the juices off of the chicken. We're going to use these in with the, uh, the curry in just a minute here. So now I have chicken that's relatively dry that went under the broiler, and I've got the juices from it that are going to be added in just a minute. Here. Okay, it's been about five minutes. And you can smell the tomatoes just now starting to caramelize. That's what that's what you're looking for. You don't want to burn them, of course, but you can smell that that developed caramelized odor. Now I'm going to add the juices from the chicken. They'll slow it down a little bit, and we're going to cook it for just another couple of minutes here. Getting down to the home stretch finally. Okay, it's been two more minutes. Now, at this point, now at this point, you can add half a cup of water, which would be traditional, or you can add half a cup of chicken stock, which is what I'm going to use. And now we've got some blending and chopping to do. I just loaded all of the spinach into food processor. You can do this by hand with a knife. This will go easier. You have to stop it and scrape it down a few times. And this is what you want to see. You don't want to turn it into a puree, but you want it fairly fine because and, and this is going to be a sauce, but basically, you know, it's, it's up to you. Some people don't make it this fine. They make it coarser. I, I like it fairly fine, but don't turn it into a, don't turn it into a paste, whatever you do. And the next part is pureeing the masala, which uh, I, it's, it's a matter of personal choice. I'm adding a little bit more water to it just to facilitate the puree. Now, <clears throat> after it's pureed, you return it back to the same pan, wipe the pan out a little bit, of course. 
And here's the uh, turmeric and the dark brown sugar mentioned in the ingredients list at the start. This is when they get added, finally. And now the spinach. We're going to add the yogurt in just a minute here. Get this incorporated. Got it on uh, six out of one to ten. It's on six, so just a little bit above medium. You don't need it super high because we're just mixing this back together basically. And as this starts to form through here, going to add that 60 grams of yogurt. And finally, the chicken back in. <laughs> Not back in, because it hasn't been in since it was cooked in the broiler. So, okay. Now, now I'm going to turn the heat down to about three, it's fairly low, and I'm going to put a lid on this and let it simmer for just a few minutes to let all those flavors blend together and to make sure that the chicken gets seasoned with the with the flavor too, with the curry. And we simmer like this for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes before it's going to be done. If you want to understand, really understand, what goes on in the chemistry of cooking, Volume 3 is what you've been waiting for. Sure, I've included detailed printed recipes for everything on YouTube during the last few months, as well as quite a few additional recipes, but there are several other important features here. First, it's a direct continuation of some of the topics from Volume 2, with more details and answers to questions I've received from viewers, answers that I couldn't provide in the comments section because they require diagrams and charts to explain. Second, this is the only book of its kind to provide a fundamental and scientifically accurate introduction to organoleptic chemistry. That's the molecular science of flavors and how they're developed in cooking with different methods of uh, time, temperature, the combination of ingredients, the pH, and other factors that influence the outcome. This is an extensive explanation of the browning of foods, and I don't just mean the Maillard reaction. Everyone knows about that by now. This is another whole level of understanding. But more important of all, this book introduces a novel method of making the sort of addictive flavor additives used by commercial food manufacturers, only using natural foods instead of bottles of chemicals. All you need is basic kitchen equipment and a digital thermometer to enter into this whole new world of cooking you've never seen before. If you want to know more about my adventures as a chef around the world and have some great laughs along the way, be sure to check out the video tour of my book, 40 Years in One Night. It's up on YouTube right now. Click the link. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.